Hello, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy XIV. We last left off after uh, running through the Tam Tower Deepcroft dungeon, and today we're going to uh, continue by doing the next dungeon in line, which I believe is the Copper Bell Mines of Memory Recalls. So, let's get on with the show. Petitioner ought to be arriving any moment now. Gods almighty, another second under that sun and I would have been set afire. Tank and veil if you would be so kind. Excellent timing, Papa Sean. It just so happens the adventurer who will be handling your petition is here. So this strapping young lad is the much loved adventurer, is he? Marvellous, marvellous. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, good sir. I am Papa Sean, formerly of the Sultan Sworn. I thank you for agreeing to lend us your aid. I hope you would like to appraise Alric of his mission. Yes, of course. The petition in question was submitted by an acquaintance of mine at Amajuna and Sons Mineral Concern. It relates to an unfortunate development in Copper Bell Mines. To be plain, giants have seized control of the place. These giants are of the clan known as the Hecatonchuries, fearsome creatures who were sealed within the deepest depths of the mines during the bygone Thorn Dynasty. Alas, it seems they have managed to break through the layer of rock which lived to imprison them and now prowl the tunnels where the miners ply their trade. The creatures are justifiably angry about their treatment at the hands of our ancestors, and their presence has forced the suspension of all mining activities on the site. It's no wonder they're angry. Didn't the Fawn Dynasty come to an end over 300 years ago? You know your history well, my lady. The people of that age used the Hecatonchuries to work their mines. By way of enchanted helms, they were able to bind the ferocious creatures to their will. But as is off the way in such tales, these enchantments eventually failed, and the slaves rose up against their masters. In a desperate bid to contain the unbridled fury of the Hecatonchuries, our ancestors induced the collapse of the mine's lowermost levels. So it was that the Great Giant Revolt was ended, buried beneath a hundred thousand tons of rock. Well now, that's got me thinking. I seem to recall there being an article about Cop Bell in the Mithrilai a fortnight or so ago. It said the mines were being reopened so as to meet the rising demand for building materials, like as not our boys dug a bit too deep and freed the giants. Gods, to think the poor creatures are still alive and kicking after three centuries. That's a long time to nurse a grudge. They must be seething. Indeed, and that makes them a danger to us all. There will be no mine in their copper bell so long as they remain. For the sake of both peace and prosperity, they must be subdued. This is the task which we would have you undertake. I'll not deny that the mission will be rife with danger, but our need is great, and so I beg you, put an end to this sorry business. Gods bless you. I feared you might have reservations, but I assure you, it is for the best. Hmm, in case you don't know, Cup Bell Mines are in Western Fanlan. Do take care, you hear? Ah, and one last thing before you depart. An employee of Famagina and Sons is presently at the quicksand. The fellow's name is Painted Misa, and he knows Cup Bell Mines well. It may behoove you to seek his counsel. Okie dokie. Right. So that was Eastern Fanlan, I think you said? Or was it Central Fanlan? Let's just uh, check that. We don't want my hunting log. Uh, where are we going? Let's stop a moment and think. Uh, where did we go? Uh, I was right here. That's odd. I'm sure that they said. Uh... Okay, never mind. <laughs> Looking for Painted Misa? You found him. So you're the adventurer who's volunteered to deal with the mess down in Cop Bell, are you? You've got guts, mate. I just hope you've got skills to go with him. Because things ain't pretty down there. The Hecatonchuries have left the place in a right state, and nearly a week after mining resumed. I don't know if you know this, but Cop Bell was old when the Second Duel Dynasty was still young, and it was abandoned centuries ago. If it hadn't been for the shortage of materials needed for the rebuilding effort, the concern would never afford to reopen it. We knew full well about the giants beforehand, but the project went ahead anyway. I mean, nothing could possibly survive being buried under a mountain's worth of rock for three centuries, right? Wrong. Our miners dug up more than they bargained for. One swing of the pickaxe too many, and they found themselves in the company of giants. Unless we can subdue them, the nation's glorious recovery will grind to a halt for want of ore to build with. The stone torches are keeping watch over the entrance in case the giants fancy some sunlight and fresh air. One of them will be able to show you the way in. The hope of the nation's resting on you, friend. Best of luck. Right, so uh, speak with to Stone Torch before Cop Bell Mines. Um, 
that would be in Western Fanland. Might take us a bit of time to get there because we don't have any of the uh, the Ethernet crystals for that for that region. So uh, we'll just head out there now. Central Fanland, Western Fanland. It's best to come down this way, I suppose. Um, we'll probably cut the section out and uh, see you guys once we get to the other end. One eternity later. Right, and here we are just at the uh, Cop Bell Mines location. The person that we're seeking out is just out of us. There he is. He's just popped into view. So we'll speak with him. There's been an incident inside Cop Bell Mines. We're here to ensure that its effects are contained, but for your own safety, I suggest you stay well away from here. What? You're the adventurer who's volunteered to quell the Hecaton Shuris? I didn't think that Papashan would be able to find someone so quickly, if at all. The giants are content to wreak havoc inside the mines for now, but it's only a matter of time before they think to come outside. The sooner you say to them, the better. Make ready as best you can and enter at will. Right, so that's Cop Bell Mines unlocked. And there we go. Just uh, hit you as usual. Dungeons, Cop Bell Mines, and Q. As usual. Instant cue from being a healer. Good old uh, benefits. <laughs> and I believe there's a cutscene here as usual. Good to go, just waiting on the time. Uh, yep, Benediction. Usual name, but uh, who cares? <laughs> Hopefully uh, this run will go a little bit smoother than uh, the first of the three dungeon runs that we've uh, done recently. <laughs> Try to pay a bit more attention to uh, my healing as I should be instead of uh, trying to read every last little bit of uh, dialogue that comes on the screen. <laughs> oh, level up uh, Lucid Dream and I think that's a skill that allows me to restore my uh, mana over time which is handy. Uh, let's see, actions, where is it? Uh, roll. Oh, there it is, Lucid Dream. Yeah, it gradually restores HP. Something quite handy. I think I'll swap that out for my potion. So, uh, this dungeon is quite a long one. I think out of the three of them, it's probably my uh, favourite of the ones that we've seen so far. Uh, quite a lot of um, interesting mechanics in some of the later boss fights. Just move that skill off of there. Don't need it on two separate bars. <laughs> Get a little bit of a sprint going on. <laughs> Yeah, those uh, walls break all the time and uh, unleash these big guys that you see here, the Hecaton uh, stone haulers. Later on in the dungeon there will be a section where we have to get, um, I believe it's some sort of gunpowder to uh, blow up walls to get through to uh, deeper sections of the dungeon. But uh, we'll see that shortly once we get to those bits. Hopefully uh, it won't take too long going through here. I we'll suspect it probably will take up most of the episodes. So uh, we'll do uh, the dungeon and finish up any little extra quest that ends the story for this particular section as it were. So it might be a little bit uh, on the short side of this episode. Yeah. 
for a moment. Yeah, he's got a few lovely lady classes. Uh, looks like it might be his first tank class though. I think I've got a tiny bit of a cold day as well so uh, if my voice sounds a little bit uh, nasally that's probably why. <laughs> Nice and slow, this guy. Which is just how I like it, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Does mean that uh, there's a lot more dead air to fill and potentially uh, cut out. But uh, yeah, <laughs> gives you a chance to uh, learn and familiarise yourself with everything, like, with everything that's going on once it's uh, a little bit slower paced. <laughs> There's one of the uh, fire sands, that's the gunpowder stuff that I was talking about. Let's get him topped up. And now our uh, rogue is taking some damage. <laughs> was dead there, not quite. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Right, so the blasting device, that's what you use the powder with. See, he's setting the powder there, and then somebody hits the uh, blasting device. I'm a little bit slow on the mark there. Somebody always tends to beat me on those uh, type of things. <laughs> I think those uh, black uh, Spriggan Sifter creatures kind of remind me of uh, the suit creatures from uh, Studio Ghibli. It's, um, what was the name of the film again? Not Howl's Moving Castle, was it? Um, Spirited Away, that's the film that they were from. <laughs> These guys here, so I hope these guys have got uh, a good amount of um, area of effect damage or AoE. <laughs> All good so far. Alright, I think we're just waiting for more mobs to spawn in at the moment. Oh, there he is. If we're killing them too fast, or this dungeon was always uh, slow paced, I'm not sure which of the two it is. <laughs> right, I think we should be ready for the next storm. Oh, nope, they're still coming in. <laughs> right, anyone? Yeah, there's one in the target list. Yep, there he is. Right? He's probably the last guy before we can move forward, I guess. But he's not a boss. He's as big as he looks, he's not a boss now. <laughs> right, uh, yep, looks like he was the last one here. And there's a chest at the end of it, so maybe it was classed as a boss, although it would be more of a mini boss than anything, I would think. <laughs> right, just uh, wait for the tank to get pulled up. Set my arrows on these guys. Watching that tank's health like a hole. <laughs> Seems relatively safe for the time being. There we go. Right, and then onto the uh, lift. And always make sure if it's your first time here or going forward and when you're a bit of a newbie, uh, that everybody has to be on the lift before using the, uh, the lever. Otherwise, it'll leave people behind and it'll slow down the whole run. And people might get a little bit uh, annoyed with you, but I think that uh, very rarely happens. <laughs> Now this section here, I believe there's uh, three separate bags of uh, powder that you have to find. 
there's one in the room to the right, one in the room to the left, and then of course where the power battery chamber is and the blasting device. That's uh, the roof forward after we kill a few more mobs. Right. Let's get rid of these guys. Oh, not keeping an eye on my time. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Pop the wall. <laughs> Just got a little sneaky peek in here. Yeah, there's no mobs. I'll grab that uh, treasure chest. I uh, don't need those, and I can't even if I wanted, but I will consider needing this out. Uh, no, it's the same one I've already got, apparently. So I'll just greed that one. Oh, wait. I already possess one of that unique item, so I couldn't need it even if I wanted to. <laughs> I think I mentioned about that in uh, the last dungeon that I ran, about uh, unique loot if you've already got a copy that you can't uh, roll need or even read on it, as uh, unique items being, well, unique. <laughs> right, was there nothing else in here? I guess somebody already grabbed the sand while I was taking my time. <laughs> right, so that's that wall blasted through. Never uh, fire sound. Now this one here is an interesting uh, mob. If I remember correctly, they can't be damaged very efficiently, or if at all, the uh, giant slimes with direct damage. So you have to uh, kill these blasting caps uh, right next to them, so that uh, they end up damaging the slimes. There we go. And then every time he uh, gets blown up, I believe it splits into uh, multiple mobs. You can just barely see there's two health bars there because there's two mobs and then he'll split into uh, four or is it eight or something like that. Basically the double every time I think it is. Alright, can I... Oh wait, we probably can't put power down there yet, can we? Nope. Requires uh, 12 ounces of fire sand. I forget where the rest of it is, but I'm pretty sure it's in this room somewhere. <laughs> Alright, just keep him uh, topped up. Waiting for uh, more blasting caps to uh, spawn in. After playing previous Final Fantasy games, I keep on wanting to call them bombs, as that's what uh, they're known as in one of the previous games. I think it might be Final Fantasy VIII, whether we call that, but I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, just uh, kill the blasting cap on top of all the slimes, and they should split again. Oh, yep, they did. For a second, I thought they weren't going to split. I thought they were just going to uh, be the last mobs altogether, but it was almost the last mobs. But there we go. Uh, pants. Uh, do we need these? Uh, not really. So I think we're just going to read on those. Oh, nope, that's classed as a unique item as well. Let's get a few arrows thrown out onto these mobs. And uh, keep that on my tank's health. Couldn't be blasting while someone is dying. <laughs> Remembering the lessons from the whole of the novice. <laughs> I did roll on that last item, didn't I? Yeah, I did. We're just waiting on somebody else to roll on it. <laughs> oh, 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 not keeping an eye on my tank. Now you let him die then. <laughs> That's because I was too busy uh, checking the timer on my phone to see how long we have left in the episode. <laughs> Yeah, and I believe there's a chest hidden behind one of these walls somewhere, although I think it's only a minor one that has like a potion or something. Might be wrong, we'll find out soon enough. Uh, a pair of plundered trousers. Uh, yeah, we can't use those. Wrong class. I can apparently already possess one of those items as well. I'll try what I came across that if, uh, <laughs> if I'm not able to roll for them in the first place. 
presumably they were offered as a class reward at some point. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Right, then I believe this room here is the final boss of this location. Slaves no more! Free! Free! Masters must pay. Masters must die. Never again. Never. Yeah, it'd be pretty much too if I'd been uh, locked up for 300 years. <laughs> All right, now if I recall correctly, this boss here basically tries to uh, break down a wall to uh, let his uh, minions come flooding in to back him up. And if you don't kill him uh, quickly enough, he actually manages to uh, do that. And then things get a little bit crazy with all the extra uh, minions in the room. Although I don't really see that uh, happening this time. We're pretty good group. Getting uh, lots of damage going out. No one's really dying. <laughs> there you go, you can see them starting to come out there now. Right, uh, let's see if I can maybe use recalls on him to slow him down. Nope, he resisted it. <laughs> So he's going to try breaking through the wall as well, yeah. <laughs> There's some more coming in. And there he goes. And enough level up. <laughs> right. Uh, player commendations. Uh, we'll give it to the tank. No one really stood out there, so easy option. <laughs> right, can't use those because they're the wrong class. Can't use a bow because that's the wrong class for me. Alright, so we'll exit out of here. And uh, find out where we need to hand in the next step of this uh, quest line. Looks like it's back in uh, Uldar at the quicksand. Oh, what? I thought I'd attuned to that crystal. Uh, oh, well. Never mind. It looks like uh, we're going to have a long walk back again. <laughs> so, uh, again, this part will probably be edited out. Um, I'll head to Horizon and get that crystal seen as I'm pretty close by. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see you guys back in, uh, back in Uldar. Right, so here we are back at the quicksand, just ready to speak with uh, Painted Misa and let him know that the job has been done. Ah, the Conqueror of Copper Bell returns. Thanks to you, our mining operations can resume, and Uldar will have the material she needs to rebuild. The entire nation is in your debt, friend. I'll share the good times with Papa Shan the next time I see him. As for you, you'll want to report to Mamordi. It'll do the woman well to see you alive and in one piece. No! Huh? Shut your mouth, you thieving little swine. You stole from me. Don't even think to deny it. But please, sir, I didn't steal nothing. I bought this. Paid for it with my own coin. What rot. You refugees are all the same. Couldn't afford maggoty mole meat, much less a choice cut of dodo. I'm going to say it one more time. Give back what you stole, or I'll make you wish you'd never set foot in this town. By rights, I should turn you over to the Brass Blades, you know. Help keep the streets safe for law-abiding citizens. I'm a reasonable man. If you agree to serve me in whatever capacity I require, the authorities needn't hear of your crime. Oh god, he's not really talking about what I think he is, is he? <laughs> But I ain't done nothing wrong. Twelve is me witness. But please, adventurer, help me. I beg of you. I swear on me mother's grave I didn't steal nothing. I bought this with the coin I'd saved. 
I only want to treat my children to a decent meal. And who the hells are you when you're at home? This dog's master? I've had enough of this mummer's farce. You lot, teach them a lesson. Mm, you messed with the wrong guy here. I'll take care of this. The rest of you can watch. <laughs> Not bad for an adventure. Ugh, I should have stopped at the seventh fail. Stop bloody gulping at me and give me a hand, will you? Bugger, bugger, bugger! Let's get him to sleep and finish off this guy. Right, almost done here, I think. Anyone else? Nope. I ain't getting paid enough for this. Hey, where the hell do you think you're going? Thank you, kind adventurer. Thank you, thrice over. Oh. Having a vision again. I swear there were more refugees than when I last looked. And you wouldn't be mistaken. But it's been five years since the calamity. Why are they only coming here now? It's simple, really. While a number of hamlets survived the immediate aftermath of the calamity, many were no longer able to support their communities. The residents found their lands had either been rendered barren or cut off from trade routes, and problems like those aren't easily solved. Though they tried to make the best of it, it was only a matter of time before they were forced to abandon their homes and seek a new life in the city. I see. But the calamity affected the whole realm, didn't it? Is the same thing happening in the other cities? If the talk is true, yes. Though perhaps our situation is more pronounced. Uldor has a reputation for being prosperous, though it's natural that the refugees would try their luck here first. My heart goes out to them. It truly does. But I would be lying if I said that I wasn't apprehensive. I hope their presence doesn't ferment lawlessness in the city. Well, if things do take a turn for the worse, we always have the immortal flames. I dare say the Brass Blades would welcome their help. The heroes who fought the Garlean Empire, patrolling the streets for Riff Raff? It may well come to that. Impoverished and desperate as they are, you may be sure that some of the refugees will turn to crime. You know what this place is like. If you've no coin, you've no hope. Uh, what will become of our city? Not all the refugees are bad, mind you. Some are able to find employment and lead honest lives. Dodo tenderloins. Get your dodo tenderloins. Guaranteed cheapest in Fanalan. Thank you for your custom, madam. Please come again. Looking around, you'd think that Uldar was well on its way to recovery. But peer through the veil of prosperity and you will see no end to the misery and suffering. Uh, sir, are you alright? What now? You mean to threaten a defenceless citizen? What? So her buy that meat, you say? Th that's absurd. Aye, as did I. Leave the poor woman alone, you damnable vulture. H who said that? Uh, good point. <laughs> Brr, I will overlook this, but just this once. God's bless you, adventurer. If you hadn't come along when you did, who knows what that monster might have done. Don't bear thinking about.
is closed. Hello again. We've been keeping a close eye on you ever since you left Gridania. You discharged your duty as an envoy impeccably and never once faltered in the face of myriad dangers. But more importantly, you were always ready to help those in need, even if you didn't stand to earn a gill by doing so. You are possessed of all the qualities we seek in an adventurer, of this we are convinced. Even if you were kind of dragged into that business with the dodo meat. Yes, thank you, Eda. Ahem. And then there is the matter of your gift. I dare say you are curious as to the nature of the vision you bore witness to moments ago. Well, we can help you to understand it. You're not the only one with that power, you know. We have a friend who has it too, and we'd love for you to meet her. And meeting her is only the beginning, for we would also have you lend your strength to our cause. In return, we should be glad to assist your adventuring endeavours in whatever way we are able. Should you decide to take us up on our offer, and I sincerely hope you will, Pray speak with Momodi, the proprietress of the quicksand is a good friend of ours. She will tell you where to find us. Wait a minute, we haven't even told you the name of our order. We're the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, Defenders of Justice. Oh, but don't tell anyone, except for Momodi. She knows already. Okie dokie, so uh, the next job is to speak with Mamori to hand in into a cup of hell. Hopefully this won't initiate the next part of the story just yet, as I want to keep, as I want to, uh, keep that for the next episode. Hmm, seems like that'll become ever more common I'm afraid. Don't worry though, if you work hard you'll probably be alright. Saying that, if you ever find yourself in a spot of bother, come and see me. Just don't go pestering me every time you graze in here, yeah? Of course, I do enjoy hearing tell of a gentleman's woes with the women folk from time to time. <laughs> really? <laughs> ah, Elric. Sorry to keep you waiting. I was just providing guidance to a fresh off the carriage adventurer. But gods, it's good to see you safe and well. To look at you, no one would ever guess you'd been hard at it with giants in the dark. Your every elm the adventurer Mune said you'd be, Elric. The stage master will be overjoyed when he hears the news. Oh, before I forget, there's a lass here who wants a word with you. Didn't actually know your name, but here in her description I knew who she meant right away. Thank you for sparing the time. I realise you don't know me, but I've been longing to speak with you for a while now. My name is Edda. I'm an adventurer like you, though I'm not very good at being one if truth be told. Anyway... I was adventuring with my friends in Gridania when... when... I... I'm sorry. We were in Gridania when the leader of our party was killed. His name was Avier and he and I were to be wed in the spring. You may not remember him but to say that he remembered you would be an understatement. He would sing your praises from dawn to dusk. He saw you for what you are, you see. An adventurer's adventurer and swore that he would be like you one day. I believe that he would have succeeded had a fiend not robbed him of the chance. Since that day I have fought long and hard about giving up adventuring. But when I think of the man you are, of all that you have achieved, I find that I am inspired, just as Avir once was. And so I've decided to start again as an adventurer. I will go back to the village of my birth and begin my training anew. But I want to meet you first, to ask you your name. Elric Fandrell. I shan't forget. Thank you, Elric Fandrell. I pray that we will meet again. Fare you well. Adventuring can be a cruel bleeding business. Time was I didn't know why anyone would bother. When they first asked me to take charge of the guilt, yeah, I didn't want aught to do with you lot. But it'd be a right pain in the arse looking after you all. But against my better judgement, I decided to accept the post. And I'm full glad I did. I feel privileged to be a part of your lives. And that goes double for yours, Elric. Eh? What did you say? You want to know about the signs of the Seventh Dawn? They begin to move in earnest then. Listen, Elric, the Scions ain't no ordinary folk, and the work they do ain't no ordinary work. I know full well how capable you are, but even you would think twice about attempting some of the stuff they do. Knowing that, if you're still certain you want to get involved, I'll tell you what I can. Uh, I get both? Yeah, I get both of those. <laughs> right, well, you'll have to wait until uh, next episode 
you're telling me all about the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, I'm afraid, uh, Mamori. So uh, we'll see you guys next time.